Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Grandstand Gurus, the number one sports podcast on the Explosion Network. I am one of your hosts. My name is Jack Cruz, and I'm joined this week by Ashley Hobley. Hey, Jack. How are you going? And just Ashley Hobley. So it's just us again, the two, <laughs> the 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 du- the duo, or the awesome. I was going to say the awesome foursome, but there's only two of us. Um, what do you call like a? What's a good duo name? It's a good team, like a team with a Bash Brothers. Yeah, okay, so I'll do. You don't seem like the violent type, though. Not so really. Well, that's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Ducks reference yes. or WWE? Whether oh no, they were Basham Brothers. Anyway, we we. How you going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. I was gonna say it's been a big week in sport, but it hadn't really. No, there it's, hasn't been a lot. It's it's a weird sort of. We we're just talking about it off off air. Um, it's a weird been a weird sort of time since the footy season stops like it's it's fully um it's full trade week it's um you know off season delistings and whatnot but there's not much sport happening like there's a bit of a league obviously and that if, if that's what you're into but not locally as far anyway. as, no not locally yeah like so the, far- the i think the baseball playoffs are in at the moment yeah, so, the NBA season's just started. Just started. Um, obviously, the NFL season's in full swing. For myself, I mean, obviously, I'm a I'm a UFC, AFL, cricket, sort of the golf top three. Um, there's, n- there's a bit going on, um, but not sort of anything locally. Uh, what was your highlight? Did you have a highlight? What yeah, it happened early this morning in the United Ch- the Champions League. Liverpool oh, yes. beat uh, Maribor by a Slovenian team by seven to one, seven, seven, seven zip. So that was pretty good. That the Reds haven't been playing very well recently. Well, they haven't getting been getting any results really. So to they've get been, seven against the team is was pretty good. They've been putting in the work. They've been putting in the work. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, you, Jack? Can you think of anything? I did. I actually just thought of a couple um, just now. When obviously we we're talking off air, and I said I don't actually have a highlight this week because I haven't really watched any sport. Um, obviously, I've been following the trade route really closely, but um, I have a couple. Uh, it was great to see Timmy Cahill. Again, oh, thank God, the greatest <laughs> Australian so- soccer player that we've ever had. Just about, um, it has to be undisputed now. Like, yeah, I don't easily. Know. But like, he's he's our greatest scorer. Was it fiftieth he kicked on the on the? Or yeah, fiftieth, but headed and fiftieth first. Um, <laughs> And fifty four yeah, he's just yeah. Thank God for Timmy Cahill. Uh, he's an absolute champion and a star. Um, and so it helped obviously us keep our world cup dreams alive and when i say we i mean the soccer ruse mm. but um i claim it because i do only ever watch um, well you're australian women. so it counts it's I our think. guess so six of one half does the other yeah um and then uh it's sort of this is a weird kind of highlight and it's sort of like half highlight but it will eventually be um a full highlight when it eventuates but the comeback Tiger Woods' comeback is well and truly happening. He um, he's he's sur- he's had surgery. He's coming back. He's nearly at full, like full swings. And it's it, there's a, I've been following him very closely on Instagram, and he's doing a lot. It's 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 he's had many a comeback since his fall from grace, but I feel like this is the one. I feel like this is the one, and he looks great. He looks like he's swinging the club, you know, as good as he's ever has. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. That that sort of got me going. I've been following him a, b- a bit of that. So if you care about golf and Tiger Woods, then that's a um, that's a thing, you know. Yep. It's just a weird type of year, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like this the sport happening, but it's not. I just it's hard without AFL and stuff. Normally, yeah. I'm a bit more like it's all consuming. Yeah. Yeah. The AFL. Yeah. Absolutely. Nevertheless, we're kicking our first topic. And surprise, surprise, it revolves around the AFL, um, as majority of our topics will from time to time. Uh, there's been a a, a young girl um, by the name of Hannah Mousy. Mousy. Uh, Hannah is a um, transgender woman. She um, was born obviously a man, and um, she used to be a. Uh, she played for Australia in the Olympics, I think, in handball. Handball. Yep. Um, she has been playing uh, football, AF, Aussie rules football, at a at a local level um, for Ainsley, I think, in Canberra, from memory. Uh, a quite a good player, nominated for the draft and everything. Um, you know, is 
had did had done really well at that level and um basically there's been a a, a a big controversy over the last week she's basically been denied entry into the um aflw draft um on the basis that she it would be unfair for hannah to compete in the aflw because obviously she, um, being born a man that what they're basically saying is that her genetics her physicality is an unfair advantage to the other girls in the competition um, so I wanted to uh, talk about this topic obviously it's a pretty sensitive topic and you yeah. know we we want to be as respectful as we possibly can um, goes without saying I think but um, yes. reading some of the comments around this has been pretty disheartening. Yeah, it just goes to show that bigotry and, and all that kind of thing is, is very much alive and well in our country. Um, yeah. No surprise. I mean, obviously, we've spoken about it on many podcasts about the state of the world and all that. Um, and sports fans are, are, are no exemption to that. But I guess I wanted to talk more so about the issue itself of Hannah, whether it was right for the AFL to... Whether they made the right call, whether they you know, were justified in... in um, not allowing her to to, um, com- to I guess compete or nominate for the draft. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to wanted to chat that out, throw it out there, see what yeah. it comes back with. What are your thoughts on the situation? Uh, I think it's so hard, but I think they made the best decision they could at the. I don't know how much lead time they've had on this, how long they've. Hmm like how long they've had to decide on this decision, but obviously they've been talking to, they said they've been guided by the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission. So obviously yep. they've been trying to get find the best possible approach to this issue, but I guess yeah. it's hard. It's like, if you it's want to be absolutely one, cold, yeah. yes, she shouldn't have been allowed because she was a man. But yeah, yeah it's, it's such a gray area. And mm. like, if she wasn't a larger woman then it might they might not have made that same decision would be my line of thinking but yeah it's just it's like such a great area and it's so difficult and i don't envy the afl um the commission and that to have to make this kind of call no um and it is it's it is such a gray area because it could go both ways like if she was a a like you said a smaller um woman and not because she's big like she's 190 centimeters 100 kilos like she's a she's a big girl um, if she was a smaller girl, like would there, I think the decision might have been different. And I think that's what they're basing it on is that her physical attribute uh, attributes, are um, would be an unfair advantage to, to the other competitors. Um, that's what they've basically set it on. And yeah. it's, it is, it, it's hard. It's a hard one. It really is. Um, you know, she's obviously good enough to compete in the level, um, you know she's she's competed really well playing at the lower levels for Ainsley, or the Canberra team. I don't know. I keep saying Ainsley. I'm not sure if that's if that's the right team, but um, <laughs> the the team in Canberra that she that she's played for. Um, I I'm a little bit both ways on it. Like I can see where the AFL is coming through coming, but it's such a disappointing thing that it's had to be a no, considering yeah. the AFL really preaches equality and you know they were so big on like the yes vote and that and i know they're separate issues and that kind of thing but it feels really it just it feels bad like it doesn't feel good like it it's not a there's obviously a lot of uproar about it there's just as many people saying that this is a bad decision as there are that are sort of saying well she was born a man like of course she's not allowed to play the hard part of it is is that she you know her testosterone levels so basically um for the International Olympic Committee, there they have rules in place for this. Obviously, they yeah. have to. They're a, they're a worldwide organization. The AFL hasn't needed to have a policy in place for this because it's no. never been an issue before. Um, and it's it's sort of probably caught them off guard that it's come around so quickly. Like the AFL Women's League has only ever had one season. So, you know, we're not even into the second season yet. And this yeah. issue's come up. But basically, um, the IOC have a uh, stipulation, like, you know, testosterone levels that if you're under that, then you can compete. And there's obviously a few other... Um, factors contributing whether or not you you know you're allowed to compete, but she's actually under the testosterone levels, and the AFL have said we're not basing it on that. We're basing it on, um, you know, I guess a, a myriad of other testing uh, that yeah. they've they've done. Um, so it's an unfortunate situation. I, I, I wish that it could have gone another way, but you've, I mean you've got to almost. I don't think that the AFL would make this call from a place of discrimination. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. 
they're just trying to ma- make it the fairest competition they possibly can. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's really hard. And hopefully they come back in 12 months and they've put some more, have think about this a bit more and like come to a, or make a more informed decision, hopefully, or mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I don't know how much lead time they had on this. Which... Yeah. It seemed to sneak up pretty quickly. It's only sort yeah. of popped up in the last week or so. That like, the oh, story, boy, yeah. This thing's happening. Yeah. So, whether or not they've had a while to, to work on it or not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I guess one of the other things is that she's allowed to compete at state level. Yeah. Like, she's allowed to compete in the Canberra League. So, why is that? Like, should that not go, you know, should that not count for anything? Like, she should, should she not be allowed to compete at all? She's competing in a league at a lower, you know, if they're, for the AFL to come out and say, well, no, she can't compete at the highest level, well, why why then is she allowed to compete at a lower level? You would think that the people at the lower level would be less physically prepared to deal with that than the, the women actually in the AFLW. They're going to be closer to stronger bodies, you know, trained athletes in the AFLW. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm sort of Yeah, I get where you're coming from, but I guess it's like playing in mixed netball maybe would be my closest analogy where it's just for fun really i guess i'm no, i have i have people, no idea yeah it's just people take their local footy seriously Ash. yeah i know. completely get that but <laughs> yeah. oh it's such it's such a difficult issue yeah it is a delicate one um one thing must be said though is that hannah has handled this with the utmost class like yeah. she is she she is really um handled herself really well she put out a tweet saying you know good luck to all the girls um, who nominated for the draft, um, especially her mates from Canberra. She can't wait to see you all at the highest level and to play against you back in Canberra next year. Um, I think she's also sort of indicated that she'll nominate for the draft again next year and hopefully she can... I mean, I don't know what she's meant to do. Does she sort of try and alter her body, go into like a physical training regime to lower her weight or something like that? I'm not 100% sure what she could possibly do, but... Um, I think what this does is it creates a need for the AFL to have the policy in place. Like we're at a point in time, 2017, where um, yeah. this is something that needs to be addressed. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what the like. I, I don't. I mean, it's sort of yeah. Hard I guess to ask where's the, the line? Way. Is yeah. it is it someone who just identifies as a woman is allowed to play, or is it someone who's transitioned to be a woman who is allowed to play, mm. or is it just only based on your birth gender Physical attributes yeah exactly well, right yeah because you, you you could be you know i don't know luke shuey or someone like that a medium forward who's not 100 kilos not 190 centimeters and say i identify as a woman like do you know what i mean like it could go yeah. both you could have people who could try and cheat the system and there have been i don't know why history. anybody would want to cheat no the system. of course not i know but but it's something that they need to think about when they create this policy yeah because there have been instances of throughout history and sport where people oh, change yeah. the system in these Obviously, ways. Obviously, the uh, first person I thought of when this story came up was that uh, South African runner yeah, from back, the, like, yeah. ca- uh, can't remember her name, but yeah, yeah there was a big she was a, uproar um, about it. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, yeah. I think she was a hermaphrodite, was that? I yeah, don't want to think that was. I think yeah. that was the end result. She had she both. Would, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, but the AFL needs to... They need to put something in place for this. Um, I think they've handled it as best as they can. Uh, all parties involved have. Like, you know, you can't sort of say the AFL have, have handled this poorly. No. They had to make a really tough decision that I don't think anyone envies. And I don't think it's fair. A lot of the media are coming out and slamming the AFL, calling on them to be, you know, oh, how can you do this? How can you preach equality and not do this? You know, the equality goes both ways. It's not equal for the other girls competing. If or The AFL obviously doesn't see it as equal for the other girls competing um, if, if if it's unfair there. So, yeah. It would be interesting to see the other sports policies as well. Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And they'll have to look into that now. I mean, the, this is a precedent that's been set. They've set a precedent now. You know, are they, if they, if they backflip and they, ch- they put in a policy down the road, are they then liable for whatever? You know, Hannah missed out on a year's worth of income from, you know, there's, there's a lot of legalities to it. Um, and it's a very complicated situation. But I, I feel I feel for Hannah and the fact that she hasn't been able to play. Um, I feel for the AFL being put in a position to, to have to make a, a tough decision like this. And um, sort of all parties involved, I think, yeah, like I said, have handled it pretty well. But 
it's something that in this day and age, now that we have you know a men's and a women's competition side by side, that it's going to have to be. It's not going to be the last time that this issue pops up. Yeah. So um, I'd love for it to be. You know, in in a perfect world, it would be. I'd love for just Hannah to just come in and and yeah, she, well, she identifies as a woman. She's a woman. She could play AFLW, but unfortunately, you know, there would be a lot of people, and I and I think players in the AFLW as well who would probably feel that's not fair to them, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out over the um over the future, and I'm sure we will be revisiting this topic again down the track hopefully, at some point. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully in a more positive, with a more positive, you know, I guess, outcome. Um, now, there was a horrific incident today yep. in the uh, NBA game between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the um, the Celtics. Um, do you want to talk us through it? Because I didn't um, actually watch it. I just avoid it. I, I heard about it. it. Apparently, he went up for an uh, alley-oop. He just landed awkwardly and he did his ankle like yeah. something bad. So, Gordon it's Hayward, like- who's who's a um, he's a player for the Boston Celtics in the NBA, basically today he snapped his leg in half. It was horrific. Uh, he he went up for an alley-oop. Um, he sort of got half-tunneled but sort of just turned midair and, and landed awkwardly. It wasn't a, an aggressive act by his opponents or anything like that. It was just an unfortunate situation. And it was bad, like... Landed, twist, snap, leg. Like when he landed on the floor, his leg was pointing like the other way. It was really bad. Um, I'm sure that if you're a sports fan, if you're listening to this show, you've seen the incident. Unless you're a big girl like Ashley. Um, yep. <laughs> you're no. a bit squeamish. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to have a quick chat about what do you, th- what is the worst sports injury you've a, had? And oh. what, what is the, <laughs> the worst sports injury you've ever seen? Oh, I don't think I've had any terrible durable. sports injuries. No, yeah. Durable. I ma- a- maybe got hit in the balls once by a <laughs> stray tennis ball, but that's in the backyard cricket, but that's about mm. it. You were durable. You were, um, you're one of those players who played like 150 games. Consecutive, no, that, no injuries. That's, that's uh, avoiding all sport, competitive <laughs> contact sport. You don't get hurt. Uh, yep, yep. So, no, yeah, yeah. So I'll do it. Well, I got a bit of a sore sore shoulder during my rugby union union days. I think just hit it bad, but yeah, yeah. Smashing. I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah. yeah, no, you're too tough. <laughs> too tough. No. What about you, no, I never had any like really. Bad. I've had probably. I mean, I have really loose shoulders and stuff, so I used to hurt my shoulders all the time, but it would be like, they'd pop out, they'd pop back in, they'd be like, carry on kind of thing. Um, I twisted my knee once, that was pretty bad. But the worst injury I ever did was, it, it was actually at training and not during game. We were doing a long kicking drill, um, and basically it was like 50 meter kick, like it was like lane work, but 50 meter lane work. So it was, you know, kick long down the line, um, you know, mark, run 10 meters, kick long down the line. Uh, and I... I, ki- I I went to like kick the bejesus out of this ball and I felt my hamstring pull my back muscles. So I felt my back pull all the way through my leg, like my leg extended to kick the ball and I felt my leg muscles pull down through my back and um, and like I, I was just like, I couldn't walk. Like I, just, yeah. I, I pulled something really badly in my back and that was horrible. And that's sort of stayed with me. I've always had back issues since then. Something that's sort of stayed with me uh, since then, which is unfortunate, but um, it's uh, nothing too serious. But anyway, uh, what's the worst injury you've seen on the field? The worst like- one I've seen was uh, Jirali Ali. So he was uh, he played for the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, it was 2012 at the time. He was uh, Queensland. He played for Queensland. He was playing for Australia. He was like one of the top wingers in the game. Uh, went up for a like a contest for a high ball up and under. Uh, got underneath the other player, sort of fell on his leg and just it yeah. shattered. It, his leg shattered, and then you could they showed one shot where you could see the bone sticking out of his leg into his sock. Oh no! And yet, yeah, so I didn't show finished. any more footage of that. That is easily the worst thing oh. I've seen. But I do remember also uh, Nathan Brown. I remember yeah, I back in, him breaking his leg. That was pretty awful as well. Oh, just yeah. Anyone breaking their leg in general is There's pretty been some bad. Ones. Pretty bad. Yeah, they're, and they're generally the worst ones. Nathan yeah. Brown was the one I was going to bring up, and that was a 
basically he was um, kicking around his body, and the Melbourne the Melbourne player like went to smother him, so like dove across his leg, and the leg he had planted, he sort of dove across that and just snapped it. Yeah, and and he like Brown went down and like lifted his leg up, and it was sort of like flopping. And mm. I should have put a disclaimer at the start of this topic: if you're squeamish, look away. But um, skip to. <laughs> oh god, it's it, it's yeah. it's horrible stuff. Like uh, I've seen some bad ones over the years. I think one of the other worst ones. Well, I think we've spoken about it on this show before. But the um, uh, Michael Barlow when he was playing for Fremantle. Yep. When he broke his leg, and and now still it is still probably the gutsiest thing or the ballsiest thing I've ever seen. I don't know how smart it was um, I've ever seen on footy field, but basically running back with the flight of the ball, uh, his teammate came in, slid in, and and took out his leg and broke his leg basically in half. Yeah, he stood up on it. Oh, he God. stood up on his leg. He went to stand up. He hopped for a second. He put weight on it, and you see the leg buckle. You mm. see it like bend where he tries to stand on it, and he's like, "Oh nope," and then he lies back down. Um, that yeah. that to me was like, "Geez, that was tough." Um, the Gary Rowan, do you remember mm. the Gary Rowan, the slide Lindsay Thomas sliding in? Yeah, Bra- that was pretty bad. So a couple other ones I can think of. Uh, obviously, Alex McKinnon, he was uh, paralyzed because of a yeah, bad tackle. That obviously, really that bad. is just like the worst possible. That's the biggest fear you Phil have. Hughes. Phil Hughes, yeah, obviously. And then another one that I remember, I didn't actually see it as well, but I heard, remember hearing it. And it's going to stick with me for the rest of my days. Apparently in the NBL, there was a player who accidentally got poked in the eye and mm. his eye popped out. I remember that. Yes. I remember that. Yeah, that's terrible stuff. No, yeah. Anything like mm. facial practice, you, no, I'm not keen on that. Yeah. Either. I remember Jeff White. He used to play for Melbourne, getting kicked in the face by Stephen King in the final, shattered his whole face. (laughs) (laughs) It was two weeks after they uh, kept us out of the finals. Shame. Shame. Yeah, Um, sounds so bad for them. Yeah, the um, obviously the Phil Hughes one's probably the big one that obviously obviously. ended in the the worst possible way. Anything that ends in death is probably the worst. Yeah, this has been a really downer episode so far. Mm-hmm. We've not had much positive to talk. Normally, this is like an upbeat podcast. What we're talking yeah. about is people, horrible injuries and not being allowed to play sport. And, and we've got yep. trade week to talk about coming up, so it's not going to get much better. <laughs> <laughs> you get a dull one every now and then, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You got like we can't we can't keep that level, you know, all the time. We're still coming yeah. off of but then a sideline chat. A lot of these guys come back and do. Start, play the game again. Gerald played for a couple of... He made it back and played second row for a little while, obviously. He mm. just wasn't back up to the same level. Obviously, Gary Rowan came back. Mm. Uh, Alex McKinnon, he, he didn't come back, but on the other the other weekend, he got married. He was, I saw that he's, he's standing at he's his standing wedding. He's standing at his wedding. So that's, that, awesome. that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Great there's, story. Some good, there's some good news. Hey? Yeah, some How silver linings. That? Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, we're just on that. And just going back to the negative, uh, Nathan <laughs> Brown, he was never the same player yeah. after his uh, after his leg break. Like he came, he tried to come back, I think, too early a couple of times, and it just he kept getting like hot spots and and splinters in the bone and stuff because it was a horrible break. It was a really bad break, um, and uh, you know he was never the same player, and it's a shame because he was such a good player. He was on track to win the Brownlow that year. He was a great player for the Doggies, obviously, when he started there. Um, obviously, moved across to Richmond, did his uh, you know, did his broken leg and that. But some players just don't come back. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's so hard for, um, for you know, especially a, a thing like that to come back. Like, Gary Lyon was another one. He always had issues and stuff, even coming back from his broken leg. Um, even things like knees and stuff. There's been so many players who just haven't been able to return to, like, um, David Schwartz is probably the big one for Melbourne was could have been one of the grateful forwards of all time but just three knee Ricos um, all the rest it was he just never was the same player coming back which is a shame um, mm. Luke Darcy was another one he had two in a row and was just not the same player you just I reckon you just lose something uh, yeah sometimes so, so. some yeah some do some do yeah fun yeah yeah it's a little bit sad isn't it yeah, injuries. Injuries aren't good. 
And they, unfortunately, they're just part of the game. Yeah. Every game. There's yeah, nothing you can... About. They just happen, unfortunately, no. here. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I'm not sure if... Um, what other sort of... I'm trying to think of like cricket injuries and stuff. Obviously, I mean, I, we talk about USC, but that's sort of almost a bit of a cop-out. Um, yeah. Well, even the worst... Like people having like on in football, just having... I've seen people like almost have a heart attack on the field. They're oh, like right. just... No one's no one's around them. They'll just collapse. Yeah. Like their their heart just gives out. Like yeah. they might have had an undetected heart condition or whatever. But mm. yeah, that's that's the scariest sort of thing. Like so, someone just collapses behind play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is... You bring up cricket, Steve Waugh and Jason Gillespie. Oh, that collision. yes. That was brutal. Oh, I do remember that. That was bad. That was bad. Yeah, there have been some bad cricket ones, actually, now that you mention it. That one was bad. I've seen a couple of collisions yeah. like that. Guys mm. getting hit, like, um, with the ball, like, in the head. Um, yeah. There was a Zimbabwe player a couple of years back who who was bowling, and the ball got hit straight back at him and it knocked all his teeth out. Oof. No, All right, I'm not talking. We're not talking about this anymore. Let's move on. Yep, let's God move on, it. Jack. Um, Why would you do this to our know. listeners? This episode's a train wreck. Um, tweet at Krizzy underscore yeah. mate. All the worst. Yeah, tweet it. Sports injuries with tweet, pictures. Yeah, do that. Send them into <laughs> uh, uh, gurus at explosionnetwork.com and um, yeah, we'll yeah we'll make a gallery yeah, on the we'll website. Do something. We'll do something. <laughs> okay. The only thing really going on in in the AFL at the moment, trade week. Uh, again, nothing has really happened. <laughs> well, that's not true. No, that's not a true. Few, yeah, that's, yeah, that's not a bit true. hyperbolic. Um, not as much has happened as what I thought would happen in in the first. Considering, and we're we're recording this Wednesday. This will go live uh, two hours before trade week ends. So. I guess we'll know where a lot of people are at. They often say that all of the big deals go down on the last day. Um, there's been a few moves. I mean, I'd have to say, I want to talk about, obviously, who the big winners and losers are first in the in this trade period. You'd have to say, without a doubt, Port Adelaide. Yeah, they've... Unbelievable. They are, they are by far and away, you know, if this, if, if this was a game, it'd be three-quarter time and they'd be 10 goals ahead. Um, they are absolutely just blowing everyone out of the water for what they've given up, for what they've received. Yeah, what they got in return. I mean, yeah, they've picked up Tom Rockcliffe as a free agent, which doesn't cost them anything yeah. other than his wage. Um, Brisbane will obviously get a compo pick from that. Yep. They have got uh, Jack- Stephen Motlop. Stephen Motlop from Geelong as a free agent free again. Agent. Hasn't cost them anything other than his wage. Um. They did a bit of a, a switcher switcher of draft picks um, and lost Jarman Impey with Hawthorne, uh, which Jarman Impey's a good player. Obviously, they lost Jackson Trengo to the Bulldogs as well as a free agent. Yeah. Um, but not massive holes in their team, I don't think. At the end of the year, I don't think Trengo was even getting a game, so I don't think they'd be too concerned about that. No. Um, Stephen Motlop, obviously, they uh, lost Brendan Archie to West Coast. Uh, again, Archie's a really good young player, but uh, like again, that's not the biggest uh, loss in the world. Um, and then obviously they, the big one uh, yesterday was they picked up Jack Watts from Melbourne for pick thirty-one. That was surprising. A number one, a former number one draft pick. Um, so they've done really well for what they've you know what they've lost for what they've brought in. You know, Motlop, who's a at his best, he's an A grade player. At his worst, yeah. he's a VFL player. Um, they've picked up Tom Rockcliffe, who's a fantastic footballer, yeah. a, a great midfielder um, who goes forward and kicks goals and can rack up, you know, 30, 40 possessions a game. Yeah. Uh, and they right. picked and up- he's happy to play a selfless role as well. Yeah, exactly right. He's you know, done that. For- I, I really like Rockcliffe as a player. Yeah. And, and they've picked up Jack Watts, who's a uh, sometimes lethargic, silky finisher. He's a classy finisher. Um, and uh, he might need a, a just a change in scenery. Might just might be just what he needs to, I guess, reach that level that he's uh, he's always needed to. I don't know. Yeah, with Jack Watts, it's a hard. Is it really after ten years or so in the system? Is he suddenly going to that the penny's going to drop? Is what Gary Allen said, I think, this week. Mm-hmm. Is he is he suddenly going to become 
worthy of that number one draft pick uh, with this move? I'm not sure. Possibly I guess we'll find not. out in 12 months. Yeah, that's a good point. We will. We can discuss that and again at episode whatever we'll be there. <laughs> trade week next yep. year when he's up for trade again. Um, <laughs> but I think they've done really well. I think those three players will complement their team very well. Um, and three players that have gone out, you know, mid-tier players. I think the ones that have come yep. in have been far and away better. Like Jack Watts is the worst one that's come in and he's probably better than all three of the blokes that they've, that they've lost. But, um, you know, it'll be... It'll be very interesting to see what happens next season. I think will be the big teller about what how um, how Port Adelaide goes because if they go backwards, uh, it'll be very interesting. Pressure will definitely be on. Um, obviously, we know Kochi what Kochi's like with his uh, yeah. the way he carries himself around. So, but I mean, Ken Hinckley's about just about the safest bloke in the world right now. So. Yeah, that contract is not going anywhere. No, exactly right. Unless they want to fork out a fair bit of cash. Mm. Um, we spoke and, last and week. Port, Port kindly needed to do this to like get the attention away from Adelaide after the, their postseason or their their grand their finals run. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they, they had the spotlight on them. I think they've done really well. Um, so I, I'm I'm big rap for their how their trade week has gone. What do you uh, think of the uh, conspiracy theories around the Motlop? Draft pick compensation <laughs> for the Geelong. It's, I mean, it, it, the compensation is the compensation. They can't help the the money that he's been offered, and that's the thing, right? You've got to look at the the age because they, they base it on three things: it's the age of the player, his salary, the contract he's been offered, and I think that's it. I think he's like his legacy or whatever, like yeah, that sort of thing. No, no, Which I guess he's a multiple premiership winner, isn't he? No, so, no, I don't think that... Because that's because you can't really like quantify that, right? You could be like... Yeah, that's you know, true. Like, there's a lot of terrible players that have played in premierships, do you know what I mean? Um, that's true. You, you could argue Jared Blair could get a could be worth a first-round draft pick. Um, <laughs> so, not that Jared Blair's a terrible player. I'm not making that. I'm not throwing... I'm not casting aspersions. Um, I think... So, yeah, it's, it's wage. So, the contract he's been offered... His age, and there's another one. Well, they're the two main ones, anyway. Yeah. Um, so you can't really. I mean, that's that's you can't go. Oh, Buddy Franklin's one of the great forwards to ever play the game, because otherwise the AFL can, should just say we'll make it up. Do you know what I mean? Either they have a formula or they don't. Because if they don't, yeah. then and they just they say this is what Do we they think need this to make that worth. formula public though. Well, the issue there that they've that they've spoken about is that they think that um, clubs will conspire around contracts to. That's fair. Yeah, to to uh, like you know muck with the draft. If you um, just give him an extra twenty thousand dollars or something, we'll get yeah, a high exactly. draft pick. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah, um, we won't match the offer if you you know if you give him another fifty grand, we won't match the offer. You know, get okay, a high yeah. draft pick, that kind of thing. Um, so, or, or we'll help you out in this trade and that kind of thing, you know, if you if you make yeah. his offer a bit bigger, stuff like that. So, yep. that's the reason they don't make it public. Um, but it, this is the other thing, right? If they don't have a formula and they just go, we're just going to base it on the player and whatever, it's like, okay, Stephen Motlop, you get a second round pick. Um, Buddy Franklin, you guys get two first round picks. It's like, well, then what happens, you know, when it's a, what if it's Tom Rockliffe, who's a really great player, hasn't really achieved anything as far as winning premierships or you know, anything like that. There's a couple of time All-Australian, that kind of thing. What happens yep. when they go, oh, late second round pick for Rockliffe? And Brisbane go, what the hell? He's been our best player over the last five years. And they go, well, you know, he's no Buddy Franklin. And, and the bar was set at Buddy Franklin when we gave him a first round draft pick. And they go, well, we think he's worth that. So I think the, um, I think the, they have to just stick with that formula. They probably have to refine yep. it a little bit. I'm, I have no issue with that. I mean, they offered Motlop nearly seven hundred grand a season, and he's still a fairly young player. I think he's only twenty five, twenty six. Um, yeah. So I have no issue with it. Pink nineteen, I think, is fair. Um, you know, they've done well, Geelong. They'd probably be stoked yeah. with that. But Motlop's a match winner. Like he's a guy who can turn a game on his head when he's on. Um, he's pretty fluky, but you know, <laughs> he yeah. he um, he's a guy who can win matches for you. So I think Geelong would be content with pick 19 um they're going to be unhappy they're not going to be unhappy with it i think they came out and, um 
came out and said that they they thought it was you know fair um obviously if it had been any later than that they would have come out and said it was unfair so you're never going to please anyone right or everyone so i think it's i think i think 19 was fair yeah um there's been some you know it just so happened like buddy franklin got that it was pick 19 as well for buddy franklin yeah but if hawthorne had finished last on the ladder they would have got they picked two, pick or, number two or yeah. pick yeah you know what i mean so it is what it is really you can't really they got an end of first round draft pick so they didn't they even though the draft pick was the same as what uh hawthorne got hawthorne um it, that's just because of where hawthorne finished on the ladder had they yeah. finished hawthorne actually got like a, a first round draft pick after their first round draft pick so if they had a finished yeah. last they would have got picked two Geelong got an end of first round draft pick, so they got pick nineteen. So it is what yep. it is. I, I've no issue with it. I think it's fine. Um, if anything, they need to go back and give uh, the Bulldogs two first round draft picks for Callan Ward instead of just the one. When to- <laughs> when Melbourne got two for Tom Scully, if you want to talk about crappy compensation, let's go back and talk about that. Ashley Hobley, mm. you understand? Can't live in the past, Jack. No, it's true. You can't. But I will. You know it. You damn well yeah. know it. Um. Essendon are probably the other big mover and shaker. We said last week we didn't think there was any way they would get all three done. Um, they've gotten two done. They've got Saad. They've got Smith. They need the last one, Stringer. And it's going to come down to the last day. And it's, and um, reports tonight come out. that So there was obviously the deal. There was a deal put to S, to the Bulldogs earlier, in, earlier last week, which was basically a swap of Stringer... And pick 26 is what um, Essendon wanted in return for pick 11 and pick 36. So what the doggies weren't happy with was the the swap of the second round for a third round pick. So basically they would give up pick 11 and a later pick and we they would get an earlier pick than now. So yeah, a swap of picks and obviously Stringer for pick 11. Um, we weren't happy with that and we pushed back, which I was okay with. I was fine with with them pushing back on that, um, but Essendon called their bluff for all intents and purposes, and and traded pick eleven to GWS the next day, so yeah. which threw a massive spanner in the works. Um, so it's been back on, and this is the other thing that's frustrating me is that everyone's putting this on the doggies. Everyone's going, oh, we've handled this poorly. Oh, they just need to take whatever they can get. Oh, they're not going to get anything for him now. They can't. They just need to let him go for whatever. It's like, no. Our position has no, been can... the same the entire time. People forget, right? Then this is the problem, Ashley Hobley, is you've got all these yep. Essen flogs in the media. My third most hated Essie. team, Essen flogs. Oh. Yeah, Essen and flogs. A... Oh, Essen and flogs. Yeah, it was a plan. I thought words. you were going Essing as in effing, but. Oh, no, Essen. The word was. Essen flogs. Okay. Essen, like Essendon, but flogs instead okay, of yep. the Don. You follow? Yep. You good? Yeah, we all right? All good. Can we continue Makes on? Makes sense. Good, great. Yep. Um, <laughs> you got these knobs like Matthew Lloyd and Mark Robinson and Tim Watson and these muppets in the media, Adam Cooney, bloody turncoat, who are so far up Essendon's backside, they're of course they're going to put this out in the media. And everyone's getting right on us and have been all the last two weeks. Our stance has not changed. Since the very beginning, we said, Jake's up for trade. We think it's best for both parties if Jake moves on. However, we will not be just gift wrapping him and handing him off. This was the statement that was made by our coach over a month ago when this whole thing came out. And people said, dogs want to get rid of Stringer. Um, You know, and this is the thing. This is the other thing, right? Everyone wants bloody transparency. Everyone wants honesty. Everyone says, "Oh, you know, AFL clubs—they're not open enough. Oh, they don't give us the, the the truth. They don't give us the right information. It's all, you know, shadows and and sneakiness and all this stuff." For someone actually comes out and is honest and says, "This is what's happening. It's not working. We think it's best for both parties if Jake moves on, but we're not giving him away." Everyone comes out and goes, "Oh, the doggies shouldn't have done that." Oh no, no, no. Oh, no, no, they shouldn't have done that. That's going to cost them. They should have kept that quiet. It's like, well, if you don't say anything, then the media goes, oh, the doggies are handling this poorly. They haven't come out and said anything. Oh, and it's like, you can't please any of these idiots. Tell you what. Uh, yeah, it's all all hyper, all contradicting. Oh, 
It's ridiculous, yeah. mate. And we, like I said, we have not changed our stance from the start. We said we're not gift wrapping this player. He is an all Australian premiership first round draft pick player, game winning player. We are not just going to hand him away for nothing. If we're not happy, he'll play for us next year. He's contracted. We've well, not changed our stance draft? on that. Oh, yeah, he was. Sorry, he was, I thought you said number one. No, no, he was. Yeah, sorry, he was a he, pick five. He was um, in twenty twelve. Yeah. We and we have not changed our stance from the beginning. We are not trading him unless we are happy with the deal. People are not happy with that. Bugger off. I don't care. Take your crap elsewhere. I'll send him we'll send him to Brisbane for pick two. Pick one or whatever you've got. What have you got this year? Pick one. Yeah, we got pick one. You're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Take Stringer. Um so Probably Stringer not. watch. God, after this well, we'll do it. Only a trade one more day, Jack. Week. Just gotta st- Oh, he'll either Unless be a bulldog. He stays and then J- Stringer Watch is going to go all year. <laughs> oh, God. He'll either be a bulldog um, at 2 o'clock tomorrow or he'll be a bomber, you'd think. so. You don't I think th- a surprise third entrant could possibly no, make no a play? No one wants him, mate. No one wants him. The Essen Flogs, they're going to they say him. that. They say that, but the, as trade week close, starts to close, people go crazy. Oh, I hope. That'd be great if someone pops up and <laughs> last minute saviour and here he's a. His pick eight or something. Carlton comes in. Here you go. Mm. We'll take him. Um, I'd have that. But, yeah. I mean, I think there was <coughs> there was talks of trades, pick swapping with, with West Coast to, to get it done, but that would possibly disadvantage us depending. There was talk of us offloading pick, uh, pick 11, getting pick 13 in return. No, we, we give up pick nine which we've got to west coast and we get pick 13 back and then we get their first round draft pick next year and then Essendon get stringer and pick 25 and 30 go to west coast and it's a messy 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 deal but the only way that could benefit us and next year is apparently supposed to be the super draft so the only way that that would benefit us is if west coast um finish like bottom of the ladder but as far as i know now um that deal has fallen through from what i've heard this evening so yeah I think he's going to be a bulldog, which is sort of what I've been hoping for the whole time. How that plays yeah, out, happy. how that plays out, I, I don't know next year, but you know, hopefully they can sort their. their is, stuff how out. long is he contracted till? Do you know next year? Till the end of next year, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully they can sort that out. Um, hmm. but who knows? So Josh Shaki, what's happening with Shaki? Not a lot of interest don't, from Melbourne clubs. Not a lot of interest. I think he's going to stay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, like you were Stringer, but I think no one wants him. I think I think Concerning. Brisbane were happy to let him explore his options, but if unless someone was going to come back with a good, really good deal, they weren't going to do anything. Yeah. He's contracted for another two years, so mm, mm. um, yeah, interesting that no one wants a number two draft pick key forward who's only been in the system a couple of years. I find that staggering. There must be something else to him that he's either not up to it or he hasn't got the right physical attributes or whatever because apparently he's supposed to have a, a great tank which is, I find yeah. really interesting that but no one's willing yeah, to take he, a punt on him like no one's even willing to try unless Brisbane are asking too much which I couldn't I couldn't imagine that would be the case they're happy to let him have a look around I mean you're not going to get a first know. round draft pick for him I wouldn't think why not He's a, he was a number two draft pick yeah, but he doesn't, arguably know, but if he was clearly, in the draft this year he'd be the top key position player do you think so Probably. I think so. That's what experts have said. Yeah, possibly. But I guess there's, uh, there's uh, that's what I mean. Like, it's it's buyer beware at the moment. There doesn't seem to be any yeah. interest. People are not willing to give up a first round draft pick. So, yeah. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. What do you think of this Bryce Gibbs situation? Yeah. I, I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, it's almost done. Apparently, Carlton have come out and instigated it. So, um, apparently, it other- almost went through tonight mm, yeah except there's, they there's been... misunderstanding because they thought they were throwing in next year's second second year second round draft second pick round as draft well pick. yeah but apparently it did, didn't so they yeah yeah it's um weird... this is an interesting one tomorrow is going to be very interesting there's gonna be a lot of stuff go down tomorrow um we'll do a bit of a trade wrap next week obviously but yeah. there's going to be like there's so much that hasn't happened yet the ablet deal still hasn't happened um Charlie Cameron hasn't happened. Stringer hasn't happened. Just Gibbs hasn't happened. Um, Lockie Weller is apparently meant to be. Lockie traded. Weller wants to go home. Basically said, well, if I don't go home this year, I'll be going home next year. Um, so whether or not Freeman will get rid of him for 
get something decent for him this year or not. Apparently, uh, they want the Suns pick number two. Yeah, crazy. I think that's a bit extreme. They're crazy. Yeah, Lockie Bell is not that good. Um, you know, there's a lot of clubs that aren't doing anything. St. Kilda, unsighted. North Melbourne, unsighted. Apparently, North uh, Melbourne's looking at maybe they're shopping around Swallow and Lindsay Thomas, apparently. Yeah, uh, they've yeah. yeah they've 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 told Lindsay that they'll be exploring their options, but who's going to take Lindsay Thomas? I don't think anyone. Um, GWS have you know lost a couple of players. Um, there's going to be some big moves like the Matt Kennedy from from GWS to Carlton still in the air. Like there's so much to go th- to to still play out, and they've only got what twelve hours from when five, well, five hours <laughs> Less- of actual like it's I think they start at nine and then um, they've got until. 2 p.m. to to get it done yeah. like they better get a move on there's so much to happen uh it's gonna be crazy they might as well just make no, trade week just... one they need to cut it back it's too long it's too long yep if, they, if everyone's gonna wait till the last day to do something it's too long yeah it's way too long yeah either they make it a full month or they make it one week but two weeks is not the right amount of time because I understand you got to have like you got to because you got to like put club puts player X up for trade. You got to do go and do like you physicals gotta send your and doctor that sort doing of thing. Physical, yeah, medicals and stuff like that. Just interview the player, make sure that he's not a flog, and you actually want him at your club. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's, yeah. there's there's all of that. But we'll we'll have a full trade wrap next week, which will be great. So hopefully a less uh, depressing Grand Saint Gurus than this week's yep. episode. Uh, all right, moving right along. Uh, Ashley, we just had you had you, you just dropped some breaking news. No, this is a flog of the week nomination. Oh, is the flog of the week nomination? All right, well we'll, yep. we'll move right into flog of the week. Flo- flog of the week. Flog of the week. And I'll let you kick it off with. You've got two nominations. So first up, the officials who cancelled the GLT Cup match between Victoria and New South Wales mm. apparently. Halfway through the second innings, like New South Wales, uh, oh no, Victoria was chasing and they called it off because of it. they decided it was a dangerous pitch. Like, like no warning or anything. There was like a couple of bounces and they just called the game off. Nobody knew what was happening. <laughs> and eventually they decided that under Duckworth Lewis system that uh, Victoria had won the match and yeah. would go into the final. Yeah, Victoria. So, it, just <laughs> crazy. Just crazy. <laughs> That is bizarre. Yeah, I find that absolutely bizarre. It was bizarre. the most bizarre thing. But uh, Victoria yeah. for the win. Happy days. Yeah. So there's that. And then uh, from the Chicago Bulls, Nikola Miritich and Bobby Portis. Apparently, they got into a fist fight during practice. <laughs> and uh, that left uh, Miritich hops- hospitalized in sidelines indefinitely. Mm, so, you know. Wow. Yeah, not the greatest thing. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Sounds like uh, a Chicago Bulls thing. Does Johnny. sound that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, Johnny. And a next nomination goes to I, I. I cannot honestly believe this guy hasn't been nominated yet, or at least I hasn't think he's been nominated. He, he hasn't been nominated. Yet. Okay. Um, nomination goes to Nick Kyrgios, the Australian tennis player, walked off the court at the Shanghai Masters. Because, um, and I quote the article, he is a tool. Yep, that, that's what it says there. He's a tool. No, sorry, <laughs> that's just me. Um, not that I'm a tool, he's a tool. Uh, this guy just make, continues to make a fool of himself. He carries on like an absolute child. Um, he was complaining about crowd noise and he couldn't concentrate. Mate, have you ever played a tennis match in Australia? Are you crazy? What are you banging on about? Have you not heard of the Fanatics? Sort it out, yeah. mate. You are going to come... You, 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 Nicholas, have an opportunity to be the... Gr- could You could potentially be the greatest Australian tennis player to ever live. You have He's that... You've got all the potential the in the talent. world. It's just attitude. Sort it out, mate. You you are you are just... You are, you are a nomination of this segment. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, so our winner from this week, I don't think we can give it to the cricket umpires because victoria won as a result of their actions yeah. uh it's, so it's out of our bulls players or our uh our dear mate nick i think it's got to be nick i think maybe nick for a continual effort this week yeah yeah just a congratulations nick curios we should tweet at him he's quite he's quite active do you reckon we should tweet at him he's quite active on the you're tweets. more than welcome to do it i'm not 
He'll probably tweet back. I mean, he probably he might get will. Us some publicity. I'd, I'd want him to listen to a better episode, though. If he's going to like come at yeah. us and be like, "Listen, oh, I better listen to this podcast." He's you like, guys, you're so depressing. <laughs> this, what is this crap? I'm like, listen to one of our good, one of our good episodes, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't think this has been a bad episode. It's just been a little bit. It's been a bit of a downer episode. It's a downer. Yeah, but that's fine. Uh, so, Nick Curios, congratulations. You are the ninth installment of Flog of the Week. You joined some illustrious company, including David Kosh, Toby Green, Ray Hadley, John Jones, that Queensland footballer. Um, so and a chihuahua. Sorry? <laughs> and a chihuahua. And a chihuahua. And a chihuahua. Well, he didn't win that week, but he was nominated. Didn't he? I'm pretty no, sure he, he won. Didn't. No, he didn't win. He no, robbed. I think it was, uh, I think it was Kochi that week. Or maybe it was, that was the Toby Green, John Patton. No, it would have... It was either Kochi or... It might have been you two. Maybe it was maybe. you guys We're we'll going to have to backtrack. Anyway, never mind. Never mind. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for sitting through a depressing episode of Grandstand Gurus, the <laughs> number two sports podcast on the Explosion Network. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I kid, I kid. Uh, this has been a product of the Explosion Network. You can find all of our much more cheerful content over at www.explosionnetwork.com. You can follow us all on Twitter, or you can follow me and Ash on Twitter. That's all of us. You can follow the other guys as well, but I'm not going to tell you what their Twitters are because they aren't on the show. You can follow Ashley. He's at Ashley Hobley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, H-O-B-L-E-Y. You can follow me at Cruzy underscore mate, and you can follow the Explosion Network at explosion pod send us an email if you like at gurus at explosion network.com let us know your worst sports injuries your flog of the week nominations and any other sports related jibber jabber once again ladies and gentlemen boys and girls thank you so much for joining us remember like subscribe share us with your friends and with your mother until next time plat plat keep on grandstanding hey listen here and here if you haven't heard, the Explosion Network will be streaming for 24 hours and participating in Extra Life on November 4th, raising money for the Sick Kids Centre for Global Child Health. Head on over to explosionnetwork.com slash extra life for all the details on how you can help us, including donating, giving us some ideas for challenges, or games you'd like to see us play. October 27th to 29th, apparently Pack Melbourne's happening, and I'm going to be there with Dylan, Ash, and Jono. So feel free to come say hey if you see us on the show floor. Then, there's a disturbance in the force. On October 27th, we'll be launching a Star Wars podcast in the lead up to episode 8, The Last Jedi. Of course, our weekly shows will always continue. Pleasure Explosion Mondays, Platinum Explosions on Tuesdays, and Grandstand Gurus Thursdays. All at 12pm, catch our live streams where I like to dwell during the evenings at twitch.tv slash explosion network and keep your targets locked on explosionnetwork.com for all our explosive content. Shout out to Bevan. Cool. I'm looking forward to the uh, Wallabies versus All Blacks match. I might be going to that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew I forgot something. Oh, well. So I'll good. put that at the end. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh...